Welcome to my engineering drawing playlist. Today I will be explaining directrix focus method for the hyperbola. In the last video we have discussed about the rectangular hyperbola, next oblique hyperbola. Now it's turn for the directrix focus method for hyperbola. It is also known as a general method as well as eccentricity method. So let's start with the direct focus method. Now, first of all, see the description of the given problem. Draw an engineering curve by general method. And you know that general method that means direct focus method. Take distance of focus from the directories is equal to 50 mm with eccentricity 3 by 2. Give the name of the curve. Also draw normal and tangent at any point on the curve. So here basically three different objectives. First you have to draw the engineering curve. Then you have to give the name of the curve. And at last normal and tangent at any point on the curve. In the earlier video we have discussed about the direct focus method in case of ellipse and parabola. So it is almost similar step that we have discussed but you should keep in mind there are some few changes. So let's see first of all you have to draw the directrix line that is always vertical reference line give the name as AB. Next randomly take any one point on this directrix line let's say it is C. Then draw the horizontal line which is passing through the C point. But here the distance is given to you that your focus point is 50 mm from the directories. So I am going to take the distance 50 mm from the directories. So I can look it over here. This is the focus point that is denoted by F. Now divide the CF distance into equal part. But how many equal parts that you can decide from this eccentricity? Here you can see numerator is 3 and denominator is 2. So the division that must be equal to the sum of these two figure. That means 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So you have to divide this distance into the 5 equal parts. So you can take five equal parts with the help of this scale easily by 10 mm each. Now mark the vertex point and that is always three division from the focus point towards the directrix. So always keep in mind that vertex point is always equal to the numerator division. So here you can see numerator is three. So it must be three division from this focus point towards the directories. So here you can see first, second and third division. So here your vertex point is there. So give the name as V. Now draw the vertical line passing through this vertex point. Take initially the random length. Now take the compass and set the radius that is exactly equal to VF. Draw the arc with V as the center. And so that you will get the intersection point here. Mark it as E. So once again keep in mind here the radius is exactly equal to VF. Draw the arc with V as the center. So that you will get the E point. Now join CE and extend it. Now draw the vertical line. It can be 3, 4 or 5 lines. But this line must be right side of this vertex point. And the distance between this line you can take randomly. But it should be very near to each other. Now you have to follow the same step that we have discussed in case of ellipse by directrix focus method as well as parabola by directrix focus method. So give the number as 1, 2, 3, 4 
on this axis line which are actually the intersection point of this vertical line and axis line give the corresponding point on this inclined line so here you can see this is one number so it must be one dash similarly two so it must be two dash then three dash and four dash next is the very important point set the radius as one one dash so you have to take the compass set the radius as one one dash next draw an arc on one one dash line so here you can see one one dash line so you have to draw the arc on this one one dash line but very important point with f as the center so here you have to take f as the center draw the arc on one one dash line so here you can see one one dash line so i have drawn the arc on this one one dash line now mark the point as p1 here it is also p1 because of we have taken the radius as 1 1 dash now you have to repeat the same step now set the radius as 2 2 dash draw the arc on 2 2 dash line again f as the center so you will get p2 next can you imagine my dear friend what should be the next step yes exactly right you have to set the radius as 3 3 dash with the help of the compass draw the arc on this 3 3 dash line with f as the center so you will get p3 point similarly you will get p4 now join all the points by the smooth curve but keep in mind that it must be passed through this vertex point v also so it should be very smooth curve and it should be with the arrow at both the ends so this is your first answer draw an engineering curve now give the name of the curve here you can see eccentricity is 3 by 2 that means it is greater than 1 and we have discussed in earlier video about the concept of eccentricity do you remember the concept of eccentricity if not then definitely you can see my earlier video about the concept of eccentricity here eccentricity is greater than 1 so definitely it must be the hyperbola if it is exactly equal to 1 then it must be parabola and if it is less than 1 then it must be ellipse so here it is greater than 1 and so that it will be hyperbola so give the name of the curve as hyperbola so this is your second answer now third one also draw normal and tangent at any point on the curve so first of all take randomly any one point on the curve where i want to draw the normal and tangent so let's say it is the point s where i want to draw the normal and tangent now the first step is joint sf and perpendicular to this sf you have to draw the line which will intersect this directrix line here you can see but keep in mind that this perpendicular line must be passed through this focus point and how you can draw this perpendicular line to this sf so very simple match the long line on the scale with this sf line here you can see so automatically you will get the perpendicular line to this sf now mark the point over here and give the name as t join ts and this will be your tangent and tangent must be with the arrow on both sides now draw the perpendicular line to this tangent and passing through this S that will give you the normal and once again that you can do with the help of this scale here I have matched the long line with this tangent so definitely you will get the normal so this is your third answer normal and tangent at any point on the curve at last what will be the effect 
if eccentricity is 4 by 3 here instead of 3 by 2. Can you imagine my dear friend? What will be the effect? Write your answer in the comment box. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate it.